All right. Thank you and welcome. Thanks for coming to check out this video series. If you are here, it's most likely because the Holy Spirit has sparked in you an interest in the ancient prayer discipline known as the Liturgy of the Hours. Now, I need to be very clear right now. I'm a lay person with no formal training on the liturgy. I bought and downloaded a couple of books, I watched a few videos, and I asked questions on internet sites. It took a lot of work because I couldn't find anything that really broke it down into easy-to-understand visual examples, and this is why I wanted to try to share with you what I have figured out on my own. Now, understand that mistakes will be made by both you and I. But the great thing is that God is not going to punish you because you missed an antiphon, or forgot a psalm, or, uh, or you forgot where to place a, a certain prayer. We'll cover all that in a little bit later. Now, just so you understand, deacons, priests, and those in religious orders, they're obligated to perform you know, parts of the uh, liturgy or the entire liturgy daily. Lay people, which is pretty much us ordinary Catholic Christians, are encouraged to pray the liturgy at least for the morning and evening prayers. I prefer to do the whole thing uh, from start to finish. Uh, every three hours, we'll, again, we'll, we'll, we'll cover that you know, shortly. Um, well, you know what? Let's just get on with it. The Liturgy of the Hours, uh, it's also known as the Divine Office, the Work of God, uh, the Canonical Hours, and the Breviary. Breviary. Oof, that's a tough one. There's also a one-book version called the Christian Prayer, which I believe focuses on the morning and evening prayers with shortened and abbreviated versions of the other hours. I'm not sure, because I never actually picked one up. I personally went with the full uh, four book series after doing some research. Every time I saw the four books set in the store, it was shrink wrapped and sealed, so I couldn't even figure out what I was going to be buying. That's another reason I wanted to do this video, so you can see exactly what it is you are considered getting. The four book series with leather bound covers will set you back uh, probably about 190 bucks for the for a brand new set. Uh, you can get them from uh I got mine from the Catholic Book Publishing Company, which actually is the manufacturer of this. They're located in Jersey, so you know, if you buy from them, you're you know kind of buying local. Um, you know, not by a particular parish or town, but you know, you're at least keeping the money in our state. Um, you can find cheaper ones, uh, like on the used book markets, like on eBay or Amazon or someplace like that. Um, and you can even save a little bit of money if you get the vinyl covered editions. Um, you can even buy the books individually, uh, I think especially the vinyl ones, um, as the seasons come into play, because there are four books. Um, uh, so, you know what, let's just see what, uh, what you actually get when you, when you buy a set of these books. Alright, so, the first thing you get are four books. And, in the box you also come across a whole bunch of papers. Now, at this point, you're probably saying to yourself, uh, what do I do? What is this nonsense? Where do I even start? All right, well, let's take a look at the books themselves. There are four books, and they're numbered properly with nice Roman numerals. We've got... No, they're actually in order here. Let me dump them out. we got book one. See the number one there? Nice. Embossed on the uh, leather. This is the Advent season to Christmas season. Right. Book number two we have is, yeah, see the number two, it's for Lenten season to the Easter season. All right, we've got book number three, which is for ordinary time for the weeks one through 17. And we have book four for ordinary time weeks through 18 to 34. Now, if you don't know where you are in the you know, liturgical you know, uh, calendar, you can take a visit over to the website for the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, which is at www.usccb.org. That's usccb.org. That's the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. You can click on the current day on the calendar, and it'll pop up with today's Mass readings, but more importantly, the day and week of the liturgical calendar will be shown there as well. Or you can just do what I did and pick up one of these free calendars. Every church seems to uh, be giving away around Christmas time. On this, you can even see. So we can get in there. Tells you second Sunday of Lent, third Sunday of Lent. Everything is based off of your Sundays. So as long as you know where your, yeah, you know, where your, where your um, 
Sundays are, you can figure out where you are. As a matter of fact, let me, let me show you. Because you might be confused what ordinary time is. Ordinary time is between the seasons. Um, you know, of uh, Easter and uh, Christmas. And when nothing really major is happening. Like, uh, let's pick September, for example. As you can see, you can see the 24th Sunday in ordinary time. 25th Sunday in ordinary time. So you'd be working off of these. So if we see, uh, if we're on September 22nd, we're in the 25th Sunday in ordinary time. That would be in, uh, that would be in the fourth book, weeks 18 to 34. Pretty simple, right? All right. Now let's see what else we got in this thing. All right. The first thing we have is this sheet, which is the basic introduction to the liturgy of the hours. I'll talk a little bit about the actual uh, history of this stuff a little bit later, but, you know, you can see there's a little bit of interesting information on this. You know, there it is, recommended for religious and laity. You can even see on the back, they give you the actual numbers of the books if you need to order them individually and what they, each of them should be. It tells you, uh, no, there's even like a little mail-in coupon so you can buy the St. Joseph Guide. Uh, which is the next piece that we're going to pop up. Uh, let's see. Um, this one. This is the St. Joseph Guide for the Liturgy of the Hours. It's printed yearly and it costs, how much did it cost? Uh, $2.50. Can't really beat that. Every year it changes. Um, the current copy comes free with the complete set. So if you buy it now or next year, you know, it'll be the most current date on there. They, they package it up nice. Um, it's handy to have if you forget where you're supposed to be in the book. Each date has some abbreviations and numbers which correspond to the page numbers in the book. So you can find the proper sections. It even tells you which book you should be in. Like here, you can see like, uh, what's today? March? March. Today's March 11th, for example. I mean 12th. Is it? Yeah. March 12th. So you can see here. Tuesday, the first week of Lent. But more, and more importantly, we're on volume two. Which is right here, Lent and Easter, Volume Two. You can also see some of the useful stuff in here. Uh, page ninety-four is pretty much everything. Psalms you're gonna find in the eleven o two page and uh, MP was MP. I forgot. Night prayer, I think. Yep, night prayer. The abbreviations are in the front. Uh, we'll cover. We'll cover all the basics uh in the book itself like i said this is just a handy little guide you don't actually really need it um i haven't even used it uh this is pretty much the first time i've really opened it up um but again you know it's pretty thorough to have everything with you now this is more interesting you know big scary looking red book you know what is this what is this all right this is the supplement for it now if you open it up you'll notice there's some dates Tells you pretty much what it is. New feasts and memorials for the general Roman calendar and for the proper calendar for the diocese, diocese of the United States of America. Now, these books were actually published in 1976. Uh, I mean, this wasn't actually you know, printed in 1976, but all the text in here was approved by the church and sent to the publishers uh, and you know to the printers, I mean, bound up and done. Now, there's no way they're going to redo the entire book every time more saints are added, you know, to it. You know, because in the back of these books, you'll notice there are, you know, uh, where are they? Like a, you know what, let me get my current one since I have everything set up. In my red section here, my red ribbon, you'll see they have the dates of different, you know, commemorations, memorials, solemnities, you know, feast days. Everything that falls outside, because, you know, they don't know what day of the week March 18th is going to be on. Yeah, you because know, this changes every year. So you'll have to mash this off and find out, okay, well, March 18th is going to be, uh, I'm not going to look at the calendar now. March 18th, let's say it's a Wednesday. Okay, well, now we know on Wednesday we need to substitute in some, some pieces in here to honor the saint of the day, which on March 18th is uh, the Cyril of Jerusalem, bishop and doctor of the church. So this pamphlet, the last time this was printed was in 1992, because that was the last time it was approved, um, I believe, by the church. Uh, you know, the, the complete list. Uh, I don't know if it's either the church or the or the uh, United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. But in any case, this 
uh, you should keep handy at some point so uh, you can verify where the uh, if there are any missing dates you know uh, from the back of your book. Now the next thing that you get in this whole set are these cards. All right. Now the first card has the outline of each hour and the format of the various offices. You know, another little handy guide. You know you can see what the you know gives you a nice little you know rundown of everything that you're going to be doing here. Um, pretty much lays out the basics. You know begin as above and hymns, psalms, verses, readings. And all these extra, you know, little bits. All of this stuff can also be found in the book. Um, but it just gives you an outline so that you understand the flow of, of everything. Now, if you'll notice, for every office, it's pretty much the same. You begin with, you know, with an opening. And there's a hymn. And there's some kind of psalms and a reading. There's a hymn. Psalms and a reading. A short reading, short response. Hymn. Psalms. Readings. Hymn. Psalms, readings, it's all the same. It's all the same general basic format. So it's nice and easy. You know, uh, there are some uh, obviously differences between the time of day, but it's all workable. It's all easy. So you don't have to worry. You don't, again, you don't even really need this once you understand, you know, what, you know, what the format is and you can see it in the book itself, which again, we will cover uh, a little bit later. The other cards you get, these are actually numbered. If you'll notice, uh, Two and one. Now these, as you can play and see, common texts, solemnities and feasts, invitatory psalms, and night prayer. Again, all of this stuff is already in the book, but these are just handy little cards to keep uh, you know nearby, um, so you can reference them quickly. Now me, I like to take my common texts because again, I do I do it all. So I have my uh, invitatory which will start every prayer session, uh, in the morning, that is. Um, uh, and the cover has the morning prayer. This is a standard uh, canticle, they call it. Uh, the canticle of Zechariah. This is the one that, uh, you know, is said every every morning prayer. You know, it does not change. Um, other things change. The readings, the hymns, the psalms, they all change, but this does not change. This is done in the morning. And the same thing in the evening is uh, the Canticle of Mary. Um, this is also done every day, every evening, does not change. Uh, this one, I usually like to just take my book. I'm in, I'm in the first week of Lent, so I just like to stick that right in the corner. And I keep that in there so I can reference that when I need to. Okay, so now we have, we've covered all that. Now, lastly, the thing I want to show you. Because you just spent a lot of money on these books, and it looks crazy. But look at these! Look at these! Look at this! This thing pulls right out. These are your ribbons. It pulls right out. Look at this! This little chintzy piece of plastic with some ribbons. This looks like taped on it or, or slathered on with glue. Uh, you know, I mean, why? Well, it looks crazy, but it's not really. With all the tugging and yanking you're going to be doing on these ribbons. They're going to start tearing, they're going to fray, or they're just going to get plain dirty. Now, the Catholic Book Publishing Company had the foresight to not glue these permanently into the spine of the book. So now if your ribbons get all nastied up, or even if you just want to customize it, all you have to do is cut a piece of cardboard or a piece of one of those uh, you know, flexible plastic uh, you know, office folders, and then glue or staple new ribbons of your choice. Thick ribbons, thin ribbons, tassels, strings, whatever floats your boat. Then all you have to do is slip it back, you know, make sure your cover's open a little bit. You know, crack open the book a little bit. There's the, the yellow gap in there. And you can just stick your ribbon back in there. And then close it back up, and you're back in business. And we'll cover the where these ribbons go a little bit later. So I'll just throw them in there for now. All right. Now it's a little bit of the history time. Now the structure of this prayer um, throughout the day, it goes back to at least the late 300s. And you can find it in the Apostolic Constitutions, particularly Book 8, Section 4, Paragraph 34. It's worth a read to understand, which I'm going to do now. So, you know, I'm going to bore you, you know, whatever. Here it goes. The title of the section is, At What Hours and Why We Are to Pray. It says, Offer up your prayers in the morning, at the third hour, the sixth, the ninth, the evening, and at cock crowing. In the morning, returning thanks that the Lord has sent you light 
that he has brought you past the night and brought on the day. At the third hour, because at that hour the Lord received the sentence of condemnation from Pilate. At the sixth, because at that hour he was crucified. At the ninth, because all things were in commotion at the crucifixion of the Lord, as trembling at the bold attempt of the impious Jews, and not bearing the injury offered to their Lord. In the evening, giving thanks that he has given you the night to rest from the daily labors. At cock crowing, because that hour brings the good news of the coming on of the day for the operations proper for the light. But if it be not possible to go to the church on account of the unbelievers, you, O bishop, shall assemble them in a house that a godly man may not enter into an assembly of the ungodly. For it is not the place that sanctifies the man, but the man the place. And if the ungodly possess the place, avoid it, because it is profaned by them. For as holy priests sanctify a place, so do the profane ones defile it. If it be not possible to assemble either in the house, I'm sorry, in either the church or in a house, let every one by himself sing and read and pray. That's key. I like that section there. Or two or three together. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Let not one of the faithful pray with a catechumen. No, not in the house, for it is not reasonable that he who is admitted should be polluted with one not admitted. Let not one of the godly pray with an heretic. No, not in the house, for what fellowship has light with darkness? Let Christians, whether men or women, who have connections with slaves, either leave them off or let them be rejected. All right, there's a lot of extra in there you didn't need, but it laid out the fundamental uh, setting of the hours and the reason behind them. And it also uh, did specifically mention in there uh, that you can, you know, pray, you know, singly by yourself. Um, these uh, liturgy of the hours is, really, you know, is meant also for um, public displays, uh, not displays, uh, you know, public um, prayer, uh, whether in a congregation, uh, or, you know, a group of people together, um, you know, cause especially with the psalms, you know, there's some singing involved, and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. Um, so, uh, just so you know, that little paragraph was from a website I found called newadvent.org. Um, I'm going to put up a little shot of the website with the source intro on the bottom, just covering myself for copyright purposes. All right, so now we know where the hours come from. But the structure of the day has been modified through the history of the church and can be summarized at the most basic today, post-Vatican II, as the first one is the Office of Readings, uh, sometimes called Matins. That's usually in the early morning. Then there's Morning Prayer. Uh, which was once known as Lauds, L-A-U-D-S, between 6 and 9 a.m. is generally about the time you do it. I try to get them close to the actual times, like 6 a.m. Um, for my morning prayer. Uh, daytime is actually broken up into three. Uh, the mid-morning, uh, I believe it's pronounced Tercy or Turch. Uh, that's usually between 9 a.m. and noon. I try to do it you know, as close to 9 as possible. Um, midday prayer, sext, that's between noon and 3. Again, I try to do it close to the you know, the actual hour, which is noon. And the afternoon prayer is done, is called none, and is done in, uh, between three and six. I try to get close to three because six o'clock is evening prayer, once known as vespers. And the night prayer, sometimes called compline, is done before bed, um, which for me is usually like about, you know, nine, nine thirty. All right, well, for the purpose of these videos, we're going to start the actual praying by focusing on the morning and evening prayer since those are what uh, the minimum that you should really, uh, you know, be attempting um, when you start the Liturgy of the Hours. I'll cover the rest in additional, I guess you'd call them advanced videos. All right, now that we've got the introduction down, let's move on to setting up the books for use, and we're going to go over the sections. I'll introduce you to those. The next video is a short one, and it will get you prepared to actually pray the Liturgy of the Hours. Thank you again, and God bless.